Greetings, this is M squared, and we're going to take some linear equations, and we are then they have fractions in them, and we are going to write them in standard form. Standard form, you remember, is ax plus by equals c. A and b are coefficients, then the numbers in front of the variable, c is a constant. To have something in an equation in standard form, a linear equation in standard form, a, b, and c must be integers, so you can't have decimals or fractions. A has to be positive, and A and B both can't be zero at the same time. And so we're going to write them in standard form and then identify what A, B, and C are. So if we look at this and we look at our goal to get a, X and Y on the left, C on the right, and then we know that you have to have integers. We know that we have to do a couple things. We have to move the X over and we have to get rid of the fractions. Well, I like to get rid of the fractions first because it makes it a little bit easier. So to get rid of the fractions, I would multiply both sides by 4. That's always a way you can get rid of fractions if you have an equation with fractions in it. You multiply by the common denominator, and everything has to be multiplied by the common denominator. So 4 times 3y is 12y. When I multiply this term by 4, 4 times 1 fourth cancels out. So I just have an x. That's the whole reason I picked 4, is to cancel out that denominator of 4. But I also have to multiply this, and one, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So now my fractions are gone, but I still have an x over here. So I need to minus x from both sides. So on this side, remember, I cannot combine x's and y's, so it's negative x plus y equals negative 4. So now I've got x and y on the same side. I don't, I, all of them are integers. But my problem is, step number two over here, A is not positive, it's negative. So I need to get rid of that little negative sign. And how I can do that easily is just to multiply the whole equation by negative one. So negative one times negative x is x. Negative one times 12y is negative 12y. And then negative one times negative four is four. And this is in standard form. But they also asked me to identify a, b, and c. Well, a is the coefficient, or the number in front of x. When there isn't one, I know it is one, because there's no other number that I could multiply by x to get x. That's the identity element. And the other ones are pretty easy. y, whatever's in front of y, it's negative 12, and then the constant. So those are my a, b, and c. So let's try the next one. Again, we have a fraction. To get rid of fractions, what do we do? We multiply by the common denominator. The common denominator, there is only one denominator here, so it is 3. So to multiply this side by 3, what confuses kids sometimes is that they m divide and then they multiply again. Make sure you remember, you actually are getting rid of this 3 when you're dividing when you multiply and there's another dividing by 3, because 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then you have 1 times this. And 1 times 2x minus 5 is 2x minus 5. And then we can use our distributive property here to distribute that 3 into both of those, so we get 3y minus 6, because we multiply that 3 by both things. And so we realize to get it, we get it rid of our fractions, so check number 1, but we have to get x and y on the same side, and then we have to make sure x is positive. So let's move our y over to this side. At the same time, we'll move our numbers to the other side. Those zero out. And 2x minus 3y is 2x minus 3y. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. x and y are on the same side, constant on the right. This is positive, so this is standard form. Now to find a and b and c. Simply a is in front of the x, the coefficient of the x. Negative 3 is the coefficient of the y. You'll notice that I just said minus 3 here, and there was a plus and negative 12. It doesn't matter which way you see it. If it's a minus sign or a negative 12, the answer is negative 3, not negative, not negative 3y. We just want the b. So be careful with the negatives. And then the c is negative 1. OK. In this one, we have two fractions. So we have two denominators. So our common denominator, there's nothing, these are both prime numbers, so we just multiply them together because there's nothing that they have in common. And so we're going to multiply this by 15 and this side by 15. 
So this side times 15. 15 divided by 5, we're going to reduce first. Always reduce first. It's so much easier than saying 30 divided by 5. Well, that's not too bad, but sometimes it's a little tricky. So 5 divided by th 15 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So we have 6y. Now I have to distribute that 15 into both things that are separated by a plus or minus sign. You see a minus sign there, but this is a fraction, so we consider that one thing. So I only have to multiply the 15 by that whole fraction. So the 3 goes into 15 5 times, so I actually end up multiplying this by 5. So I get 5x minus 20. And then 15 times this guy is 30. 15 times 2 is 30. So we can combine these, that's 10, and we can minus this to the other side because we need to get our x's and y's on the same side. So we get negative 5x plus 6y equals 10. Well, no fractions, x and y on the same side, but we need to get rid of that negative sign because it says a has to be greater than or equal to 0, so it can't be negative. So we multiply by negative 1, and that just changes all the signs. So that's my standard form. And then a equals whatever is in front of the x, b equals whatever's in front of the y, and c equals what's on that other side. And that's how you um, write things in standard form and find out what a, b, and c are. Good luck with that. M squared, signing out.